Shalom. This is about Parshat Vayeshev. It's the story of Joseph. Well, Joseph is a young fellow at this point, and the Torah begins by telling us in chapter 37 of Genesis that Jacob settled in the land, and the rabbis made a big deal about him, saying he settled. And the question for us to ask ourselves is how often we just settle. We don't aspire to greater levels of holiness or achievement. Uh, and then the Torah says that he loved Joseph more than his other sons, which, of course, you know, is right away going to get into a lot of trouble and cause trouble when you express your clear love for one child over another. And right before that, the Torah tells us that Joseph was bringing evil reports about some of his brothers. He was tattling on them, which I'm sure did not endear them to him. In any case, he gets a coat of uh, ornamented coat, which is called the coat of many colors from his father. It's a sign of the favoritism. And then to pour... Uh, oil on the hot fire, he has these dreams which express that he's someday going to rule over his brothers, even though he's younger than all but one. Now, whether that's true or not, uh, it certainly does not endear them to him any further. Then his father sends them, sends him to go find them, and there's this mysterious passage there which says he bumps into a man that we never meet again and never hear about again, who directs him on the way. And one of the commentators notes on that is, how often in times in life, things that seem incidental at the time turn out to have been huge. If it hadn't been for that, other things would not have transpired, and that man played that role. So he comes upon his brothers, and they conspire to kill him. Now, there's two stories there that are woven together by the editor. There's a story where Ruvain plays the main role, another story where Judah plays the main role, and there's two different nations that uh, have a hand in rescuing him. He's thrown into a pit, according to the story. Instead of killed, the brothers slay an animal, and they dip his coat in the blood to take back to Jacob to pretend that he's been killed. In any case, he's taken out of this pit and brought to Egypt, where he's sold into slavery to Potiphar's house. Well, later in the story, Potiphar's wife uh, wants to seduce him, and he refuses. He thinks that it bring dishonor, and she falsely accuses him of attempted rape. He's thrown into jail. And there in jail, he also interprets the dreams of two of Pharaoh's henchmen, a cupbearer and a baker who are in jail. And one of them, he interprets the dream to say that that fellow is going to be rescued out of jail and the other is going to be killed. And sure enough, that happens. But the one who is going to be rescued out of jail gets out of jail but forgets about Joseph. And that's where the story ends for this week. So that is the continuation of the drama in the next three chapters of Genesis, which ends Genesis, basically deal with the continuing saga of Joseph and his brother's and the movement of Jacob and his family down to Egypt, which sets up the slavery that begins the book of Exodus. It's Parsa Vayeshev.